this is how you draw a wedding dress. When you're rendering a wedding dress, I usually have the potential bride sitting right beside me. So I have to be really quick, fluid, the whole nine yards. You kind of want to go big with this because who doesn't want something fancy and glamorous to get married in? So we start with our silhouette and I'm going to go with a mermaid silhouette. I'm going to have it swing to the back. I'm really big on that. Have her have a nipped in waist. This is for a skinny bride. She needs to eat something, but whatever. We'll let that happen at the wedding. Um, I think I want to do strapless. That would be nice. I'm going to go with a nice V neckline, which I call the dragonfly neckline, which is one of my signatures. You want to indicate beading, and indicating beading could be as simple as little dots. You want to indicate seam lines as well. And I'm all about long seam lines that hug the body and create beautiful lines in the gown and follow. You want to carry all of your draping lines up. Everywhere where you do a squiggle, you go up. You definitely, for if you're drawing for a bride, you definitely want to give her a head. A lot of times you can leave the head off, but you want to give her a head. And you want to ask her, what kind of hair do you want to wear for the ceremony? Are you wearing it up? Are you wearing it down? What have you? Uh, she's going to wear her hair up. And you're like, what are you going to wear? Are you going to wear a veil? Are you going to wear this or that? We'll give her a veil, which is just easy. You just kind of just carry long lines down. She's going to wear a very dramatic veil. You'll then want to harden your lines a bit and go in with ink and just kind of just make everything apparent that is going to be the final design because you got to get your point across at your meeting with your bride. I'm not going to go nuts with the pen because I plan on making a white gown and I don't want, I only want an indication of the seam lines. And so you just use your pencil lines as a reference because you're going to go in with your eraser and erase them anyway afterwards. And she's going to have opera length gloves, why not? You want to give her some cleavage because she is wearing a corset gown, so that's the plan at least. Just go really light with your pen. It's really great to have like a fine point pen for this sort of detail. Give her her face. Oh, let me get the beadwork dotted on there. And she's gonna have some beadwork on her little dragonfly lapels, I'll call them. You wanna, don't, don't forget, before you erase your pencil, you want to like add in your beadwork if you're even going to bother or if she wants it or what have you. And I'm doing it down the front and on the lapels. Now you just go in with your eraser and get rid of all the pencil. All right, so the tricky thing about white with wedding gowns is you have to think about shading. And I use a very pale gray to create that. A pale, warm gray. And this is probably the only time I use markers. They're not my favorite thing in the world to use because they're, it just takes a little bit of mastering to just get these lines right. And I know it looks brown, but it's just to indicate. You're gonna go in with some white later. Once you've done that, 
you have your blender, which is basically just a clear marker to kind of just like bring that color in and shade it in. And it may look like it's turning the whole thing gray, but that will fade. Then you take your china marker, which is a great thing for creating details on black or white, just to kind of just make certain things pop. And just kind of just fill in the whole thing. It just will make it, lighten it up. It will blend everything together. And there you have it. That's how you draw a wedding gown.